Good evening friends, today I am going to talk about the most complicated and the burning topic of the era, therapeutic management of COVID-19. Let me explain to you what exactly is this COVID-19 and uh, what is the summary of the disease pattern. Two main processes are thought to drive the pathogenesis of COVID-19. Early in the clinical course, the disease is primarily driven by replication of COVID-2. Later in the clinical course, the disease appears to be driven by altogether different mechanism that is dysregulated immune and inflammatory response to COVID-2 that leads to tissue damage. Now, based on this understanding of the disease, we do antiviral therapy and which has the greatest effect early in the course of the disease while immunosuppressive or anti-inflammatory therapies are likely to be beneficial in the later stage of COVID-19. Let me stress the fact no therapy has been proven to be beneficial in outpatient with mild to moderate COVID-19 who are not at high risk for disease progression. The only treatment that recommends is providing supportive care and symptomatic management of outpatients with COVID-19. That's all. And if you have outpatient with mild to moderate COVID-19 and you are at high risk for disease progression, you must take few drugs which must be taken and these have been approved by the FDA that is Food and Drug Administration as well as EUAs. EUAs means Emergency Use Authorization. Okay, these are nothing but monoclonal antibodies. These have to be taken for sure if you have mild to moderate COVID-19. But you are at high risk for disease progression. Now what are these? The names are very tongue twisting. Unless you read it very slowly, you won't understand. For example, BAM, Lanidimab plus Atesimimab, Casirimab plus Imdevimab. These are monoclonal antibodies. Now, dexamethasone, a corticosteroid, has been found to improve survival in hospitalized patients. I repeat, dexamethasone is a corticosteroid has been found to improve survival in hospitalized patients who require supplemental oxygen and the greatest benefit are observed in patients who require mechanical ventilation and one more drug tocilizumab a recombinant humanized anti-interleukin 6 receptor monoclonal antibody. This has been found to improve survival in patients who are exhibiting rapid respiratory, respiratory decompensation due to COVID-19. Now, I was talking about patients with mild to moderate COVID-19 who are not hospitalized. These are the people who are supposed to be given supportive care or symptomatic management and I did mention about certain drugs to be given and these are to be I repeat the same drugs these are BAM Lanivimab it is 700 milligram tablets and Atesivimab we have to give 1400 milligram Casirvimimab 1200 milligram plus Imdivimimab 1200 milligram. Treatment should be started as soon as possible after the patient receives 
positive report for COVID due to antigen test or a nucleic acid amplification test within 10 days of symptom onset. This has to be done. There is no second thoughts about it. Now coming to the thing which is very very important and this should be known that is patients who are hospitalized with moderate COVID-19 but who do not require supplemental oxygen underscore who do not require supplemental oxygen who are mild to moderate. The recommendation is do not use dexamethasone or other corticosteroids. It will cause harm. And besides this, there are insufficient data to recommend either for or against the routine use of remdesivir in these patients. The use of remdesivir may be appropriate in patients who have high risk of the disease progression. I hope you are understanding what I am talking so far. These are very, very important things which have to be understood about the disease and the management. <clears throat> now I will come to the treatment part of the hospitalized patients with COVID-19 who require supplemental oxygen. What is the treatment? And who do not require oxygen delivery through high flow device, non-invasive ventilation, invasive mechanical ventilation or extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. These patients should be given remdesivir or patients who require minimal supplement oxygen for them you can give and you have to give to these patients who require supplemental oxygen for survival you have to give remdesivir as well as dexamethasone plus remdesivir. Dexamethasone when combination therapy with remdesivir cannot be used for certain type of condition if it is not available. But if dexamethasone is not available, an alternative corti corticosteroid can be used. That is prednisone, methyl prednisolone or hydrocortisone also can be given in lieu of dexamethasone. And one more thing, last but not the least, in the rare circumstances when corticosteroids cannot be used in for one particular patient, <clears throat> you can give baricitinib, baricitinib plus remdesivir can be used in these place, patients. Thank you for patient listening. Have a great day. Bye-bye.